I don't know. But I don't know. Theirs might be complete. They might have <laughs> lights. Yeah, yeah. I thought we weren't going to talk about it. Oh, sorry. Much. Yeah. <laughs> Whoopsie. <laughs> wow. Well, yeah. Who needs lights in the summer? You've got a month. Who needs lights? Oh, to yeah. get lights. I Thank you. Get on with it. Just, you oh, haven't done the flashing yet either. Not to mention. Yeah, yeah. So there's two things you've not done. Oh, I thought we weren't going to bring up either of these two things, but I guess we're going there. Yeah, it's true, but that's why you... Because I still haven't had my snagging finished in here. (laughs) Am I bringing it up again? Oh, dear. (laughs) The customer's always right, dear. The customer's always right. I'm just saying. They might have been there for three weeks, but, you know, it's been a few months. Yes, if we moved house next year and we had a conservatory in it again, wham, bam, getting this done again. Yeah, or would we just buy a house that doesn't have a conservatory? Ooh, ooh, you have to pause on this one now, don't you? Ooh. Are we still recording? Yeah. Welcome to YouTube. Have you ever been to YouTube Land before? I've watched it, yes. <laughs> You've watched YouTube Land. Is that like watching an advert for Disneyland? It's like the Emoji Movie. The Emoji Movie? Yeah. <laughs> or like Wreck-It Ralph 2. This is definitely being left in, by the way. This is not being cut out, so... Probably a, quite a good insight into how this roof actually went. <laughs> Not enough planning. <laughs> and no, you did do lots of planning, actually. You did as much research as you could. It's just the problem that you experienced is that there weren't many people that had done it themselves. It was all professionals. Ooh, very good. Very good answer. There we go. Yeah, you're welcome. Fin- finished the interview right there. Um, there was plenty of wing in it though because it's one of those things that you don't know what you don't know until you try it I know and the thing that really caught you off guard was this corner round here oh the camera doesn't quite show that yeah where it's just an irregular shape it's not like a a normal square or rectangle should we start with the the six rough questions and a couple of these have just been kind of repeated in the comments so um, question number one is, what do you think of the roof? Because I'm obviously the crazy person out there doing stuff. What do you actually think of ripping the roof off in February? Well, I mean, that wasn't a great time. It was half term. Um, and it was cold. It was, it was below freezing. It was very cold. It was difficult. I hadn't really factored in having to cook because we can't separate our conservatory from our kitchen. This is all together yeah. unfortunately um i was glad that at least you got almost all of the roof off and all of the insulation on in one day it, it was yeah. just disappointing those last two panels that you didn't quite get to but it was getting dark yeah <clears throat> we were lucky with the weather really because it didn't rain all of that week even yeah. though it was february it was cold but at least it wasn't wet like yes morning dew but there was no actual rain no precipitation yeah i think the thing that i dislike most about it is actually the tiles but this is just me having to get my external tiles yes the external tiles because this is my my head having to get around not having actual slate tiles or like concrete concrete tiles tiles or something like that yes so for me it's the aesthetics um the metal shingles are a bit cheap looking yes um, but they are lightweight and we needed something that was lightweight um, in order for it to fit this roof, didn't we? Yeah. Well, the, the pros are the metal sh- shingles are a lot quicker and easier to fit than anything else. And they are the, also the cheapest option for a lightweight roof as well. Yeah. So although there are some other options out there, wow, it is windy outside. I don't know if any of that wind noise will be caught on this camera, but we'll see. Yeah, okay. So that is kind of the biggest negative, is it? The um, the, the aesthetic from the outside. Yeah. And uh, you did a couple of bodges to start with in the corner again on the external, on the roof, um, just where you were trying to meet, match it up with the existing kind of roof line and the kind of, what do you call this? Um, it's basically like bay, a bay window, bay window yeah. Isn't it? There's a bay window and matching it up to that, it was a bit bodgy. And so I had to make some comments about that. 
Um, bodgy. Are you, yes. Is that what you're going on the record as saying that's a bodge, are you? You did do a bodge at one point. <sighs> Oof. But you improved it after my comments that it looked awful. Okay, fair enough. That's your judgment. Yeah. Fair enough. Um, the other things, like, so on the interior, the things that bother me, because we couldn't get, well, because it was cheaper to get the wooden slats that weren't quite long enough, it means that you've had to kind of, you've got lines. I would have much preferred just having a continuous run. A continuous this is, run. This is basically four meters long, but to get, um, I, I think actually in this thickness, because we wanted really quite thin and lightweight paneling up there, which you have to look in the other videos because I've forgotten how <laughs> thick it is now. Is it eight millimeters yes, or nine millimeters, I think something eight. like that? Um, uh, we couldn't find any suppliers that would do it in four meter lengths because it was thin stuff. You'd I, you'd have to go up, I think, to twelve millimeter thick cladding to get full four meter lengths of it. And there was, of course, then the cost as well. So it was significantly more expensive, and it would have been a lot heavier yeah. if we'd have gone that route. So yeah, there are some join lines in in the cladding where it meets, but it's staggered. So yes. you've done it kind of like no. a brickwork pattern. It's not like one line the whole way up the roof that has a joint line yeah so it is neat don't get me wrong it's just it, i would have preferred continuous things but you know yeah, yeah. sometimes it's that cost isn't yeah, it and, and uh, we didn't want to spend a fortune on this part of this the point of this was saving us money not getting it <laughs> money <laughs> we're not from jurassic park money is an object <laughs> Jurassic Park. Oh. Do you remember that was his catchphrase? Like, spare no expense. No, I don't remember that. But oh. if you say so. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So, uh, of course, it is built to a price. Otherwise, in an ideal world, you'd get the professionals in and we would have spent an extra 10 plus grand. Oh, or easy. You, you, get, you knock down the conservatory and you get someone to build a proper extension here and then you spend... 40, 50 grand, who knows how much, uh, a lot more money. So, of course, there are going to be some compromises. Let's get to the, really, the, the big questions anyway. Um, does it stay warm in the winter and does it stay cool in the summer? What, <clears throat> what's your perspective? Because I've done some scientific measuring, but really, how does it feel? I don't know, it's hard to tell because we didn't move into the property until October anyway. It already started to turn the weather and get colder. So as soon as we moved in, it felt so cold in this room. And we're still in September now. We've done... We've done half of February and March. Yeah, with the roof on. I mean, back, you know, from November, December, January, I was wearing a onesie and an hoodie and still feeling freezing in here. I could still see my breath. Yeah. Now, obviously, it's warmed up. Well, I don't know that it's necessarily warmed up since February much, but I felt there was an instant warmth in this room compared to how it was with a glass roof. I do kind of miss kind of seeing the rain on the roof and feeling that kind of, like, protection of I'm under shelter, but it's it definitely feels warmer to me. Yeah, yeah. Well, the the data that I recorded shows a huge difference. It shows um, beforehand, I was recording roughly that inside was two to three degrees warmer than outside. And that was even with, we had, uh, we had a two kilowatt heater in that corner, fan heater, and we had the two kilowatt fan heater in that corner. And then we had the patio heaters as well one of no each one of those was a three kilowatt each um so anyway we were pumping a huge amount of heat into here and we were noticing how long it would take to take the chill off it how long it would take to actually warm the place up even running the oven and the tumble dryer in here as we well. even had candles at some point yeah <laughs> the candles would make a tiny little difference as well like a 0.01 degree difference um it was 
very clear that even when we were overnight, we were still getting freezing temperatures when we changed the roof. And we would come down in the morning and we would come down for breakfast and it was two or three degrees inside. And as soon as we put the roof on it, it never dropped below 10 degrees yeah. in here, even without any heating on. So just the residual heat of the tumble dryer or body heat or whatever else, it was keeping it above 10 degrees. Despite all the glazing that surrounds it, the roof made a humongous difference. Um, and uh, yeah, I logged that for a few weeks, but we also noticed as well, as soon as the roof went on, we could then run just one of the heaters for a very short amount of time. And it would not only just take the chill off it, but it would be very warm very quickly. And ultimately we got rid of the big patio heaters I don't even know where the fan heaters are gone. Of course, we've gone in the summer months. So proper radiators are incoming in November. Month. Yeah, six weeks. We're going to have proper full six foot high radiators on two of the walls in here. So it will be plumbed into the heating system. Um, anyway, okay. So oh, while we spoke about keeping it um, warm in the winter, we have experienced a very hot summer. We had crazy June where it was over 30 degrees. Was that the week it was getting close to 40 degrees? I think I June. Well, it, was, it, was really it was hot in here. It was hot in here. A couple of weeks ago, it was quite warm as well. Yeah, you were struggling. It was very warm. I think it, was, I, it wasn't a massive contrast to the rest of the house. No. It was a bit warmer, yeah. but of course... We've, we've got, got the sun coming right yeah. through there. So that was the worst bit, is like that blazing sun yeah, in your face exactly. as you're trying to eat dinner. If you point back on the direction, so that's where the evening sun comes from that corner. You're blinded. And shines straight in the face of where you're sat now. So we've got, we're have got we still surrounded on three sides by glass, so ultimately we're not going to be able to cut out all of the hot air coming in, all the sorry, the, the solar gain, all of the UV that's coming in to heat up. But the big advantage is this room compared to all the other rooms has got right behind you is a massive opening window. To the left is a massive opening window. Behind me is another one. And of course, double French doors as well. So even when it does get really hot, as long as there's a little bit of a breeze outside, this can cool down really, really quickly. Um, but I'm quite confident that it does make a huge difference. So what we can't quite see and what we'll maybe get on the little GoPro is my little unfinished bit. We're not going to talk about that in the video, are we? We're not going to talk about how I haven't finished the roof. <laughs> if you say so. Yeah. <laughs> um, what it does show is a little bit of the exposed insulation and the foil tape. And so on some of the very hot days, I got up on the ladder and I went and touched the foil and to see if any heat was coming through the insulation. And it was just completely like normal temperature. Whereas if you put your hand on the outside of the roof, on those metal hot. shingles, it is burning hot. Yeah. Like, on a hot summer's day, it basically just schooled you. So um, that was a little bit of, uh, I guess, not really super scientific, but a little bit of testing that backs up my anecdotal evidence. Okay, uh, what do you think about the cost of the roof? Um, I think, despite the fact that we still, you still did everything yourself, it was still not cheap. Yeah. What did you calculate to do? Was it like five thousand in the end? Oh, more, more, more. Yeah. six grand, I think. Yeah, and I think we were hoping. Yeah. Like, yes, it's a significant saving to what it would have been if we'd got professionals in. But still, not cheap. Yeah. Is it worth it, though? Is it worth that expense? I, I don't know if, till the true test is going to be November, December time, when it was super duper cold and I was having to wipe the mould off of all of the UPVC. That's another thing that we haven't even touched on. And we haven't really experienced much, but the amount of condensation and mould on the, on the, especially on the aluminium frame, it was just horrific. Yeah. So was that, just... that's going to be a big positive. Yeah. Hopefully we would have, um, yeah, we would have reduced that quite a lot. Um, 
Yeah. I think it, yeah. At the moment, I'm saying that it is worth it. It's definitely warmer in here. I'm enjoying this space a lot more. I mean, there's still things that I would like to do. I'd still like to put in blinds. Yeah, especially to block out the sun that comes yeah. in from that corner in the evenings. The and then that's going to improve it even more, yeah. I think, the, heat and... The difficult thing to quantify is it didn't matter how much heat you tried to throw at this room. Just went straight you, out. It was literally like going straight out of the roof. And it wasn't because it was leaky, like, in terms of air. No, it was Everything was still up. Good quality. But it was just that 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 glazer that was basically twenty years old was not not insulating very well, and all that aluminium frame there was a huge yeah just was, bringing in all the yeah. cold from outside. Because when I got up the ladder and touched the aluminium frame, and it was like you know, frost burn on my yeah. hands. It was so cold. And then likewise in the opposite direction, as soon as we're heating the aluminium up, it's just going straight yeah, out. Exactly. Yeah. It's literally throwing money out the window yeah yeah but you, the, the the kind of some of the perceived wisdom online is if you're um, going to pay loads of money to insulate your home why don't you just pay that money over a longer period of just putting more heat into your home but i think that's a fallacy personally yeah. and because, it's not good for the environment either well of course it's wasteful not good for the environment but it was impossible for us to warm this to a comfortable temperature until we did the roof. And we had massive heaters going. So we spoke about cost, staying warm in the winter and cool in the summer. Um, are you satisfied with the decision not to plaster the board? Oh yeah. Yeah? Me too. As, as I was doing the cladding, I was still a little bit, uh, I don't know. I wasn't 50-50, but I was, um, I was a bit doubtful of how it would turn out and whether it was the right decision. And I was kind of, in my in the back of my mind, I was thinking, whatever I'm plasterboards, it must be for a reason. But yeah, now I'm satisfied. So you're happy that we went for clad in a little bit something different? Well, I'm still going with a long-term goal that we're going to redo the whole kitchen. And so my plan is, is that we take that cladding kind of look into the top half of our kitchen and then I want to bring the outside into the lower half because I want to have that lovely gorgeous kind of grassy green lower cabinet unit and then nice natural wood up up unit. Yeah. That's my plan. So as long as that happens and I won't ever regret it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah it kind of uh, one thing that my sister said when she came in was how the the cladding on the roof kind of ties into the outdoor yeah. you know the fence panels the bushes kind of bridges that gap between nature and in the home also i think it gives that not sauna vibe <laughs> but it gives that warmth you said it now i know i said you it now. Said it, no but it does of. it does give that warmth yeah, it um, does. because wood is a warming kind oh, of definitely yeah yeah a few, a, Material. Well, we've had a few people as well, I guess, just used to there being white ceilings. That's what we have in the UK, don't we? Everywhere it just has a white ceiling. How many people have told us we should paint it white or we should tone it down a bit because it's a bit overly yes. warm? Paint it white. Several people no, have told us I that. I don't want so, to paint it white. I don't know. I, th I think it's good. And I, I personally, I don't think it's overly warm anyway. I think it is a kind of cooler wood tone. Yeah, it's not like this colour wood. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, um, so, oh, the other question, you kind of covered it. What would you change if we were to start from the beginning and do it again? You'd maybe want to look at different external roof material. I don't know, because this is the lightweight option. It's what they're doing on a lot of new builds. So it seems to be the material du jour. Um, Anything else? There's not much we could have really done about that awkward corner. No. Um, there used to be a box gutter there. That I'll tell you what made you really happy is when we saw our neighbours over the road having their roof done yes. and how long they had people coming into the home. Was it three weeks at least yeah. that you saw men? Yeah, three weeks. They and had. it was several people. And yes, mostly yeah. this was just you. Like, yes, first week you had, like, your brother help. Um, and we had a few extra helpers. Yeah. But after that first, like, five days, it was you. 
Yeah, well, I only really had help for three days, but yes, um, it was interesting to see that across the road, the neighbours that have the exact same house as us, although their conservatory wraps around yeah. the side, so a little bit of complication with that. Their conservatory is a little bit larger, but they had... It's more of an orangery. No. Okay, fine. It's a wraparound conservatory. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Let's not get into the, the weeds of the different definitions. Um, they had professionals come in, like you say, and they had three weeks solid of at least two vans outside. Some days they had three or four vans. I don't know. But I don't know. Theirs might be complete. They might have <laughs> lights. Yeah, yeah. I thought we weren't going to talk about it. Oh, here. sorry. Yeah. <laughs> Let's see. Wow, well, yeah. Who needs lights in the summer? You've got a month. Who needs lights? To oh, get yeah. lights. I Thank you. get on with it. Um, that's the easy bit anyway. Oh, this was the other question. What were the easy bits and the hard bits? Um, I think doing the cladding was the easy bit. The cladding... It was just took time. The, yeah, I think, to be honest, the cladding is a bit soul-destroying because it's so time-consuming and so yeah. fiddly with the thin cladding boards. Um, that, Maybe it would have been helpful to have a second person. Oh, uh, yeah, it would yeah. have been. It, it was definitely a challenge with one person because of the length of them and how flimsy and thin they were and wedging them in. It's definitely a challenge. That was... but. Technically speaking, I don't. Th the only hard bit was in the corner, in yeah. where that bay, where it meets yeah. the bay window. That was technically challenging on the inside, on the outside, the framework, the making sure the insulation completely wrapped around it. That there's no like thermal gaps or any, you know, any leaks of any sort. That was challenging. You haven't Otherwise, done the flashing yet either, not to mention. Yeah, yeah. So there's two things you've not done. Oh, I thought we weren't going to bring up either of these two things, but I guess we're going there. Um, <laughs> but I think Otherwise, it looked like yeah. it was a real doddle. Oh. Putting up the frame, it was really lightweight. It's obviously plastic rather than metal, so easy to lift up, slot into place. It was all numbered and labelled. Yeah. Slotting in the foam yeah. or insulation, popping that in, super easy. Yeah, yeah. Just bam, 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 done. Yeah, and considering I'd never done it before, and the neighbour who was watching us like a hawk that was being a nosy neighbour, he was not only impressed that I'd taken on the, the task, but he had presumed that maybe I did it professionally or that I'd done it before because uh, to his eyes, it's like, oh, it's super straightforward. You know, rip the old roof off, put the new frame on, bish, bash, bosh, plenty of silica and a load of screws and away you go. And I guess the, the, the kit that I chose, and that was the part where I, you know, I did loads and loads of research yes. into which kit to go for. And watched videos and, on how to assemble it. Yeah, and there wasn't a lot out there really, especially with this Lekka roof and ultimately the, the decision was made when I went to the fabricators and when I was in their factory and watched how it was assembled, how, it, how they produced it. Those kind of things sealed it to me that not only was it a really high performing roof and would you know meet our requirements of insulating the place, but also it's going to be very straightforward to for me to assemble. No tricky bits apart from that weird corner. Everything else was pretty straightforward. Um, that was pretty much all the questions. Do you have any other final thoughts? Any closing thoughts? I'm glad we did it. Yeah. Yeah. We all like it. Kids like it. Visitors like it. Uh, what do you think visitors are going to come around and go? What were you thinking? Actually, we do have friends that are quite blunt. Oh, yeah. There's <laughs> definitely a few people who would have told us it was strange. That's true. Especially I was thinking that people well. are going to come over and say, yeah. like, you guys are weird. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. But also, um, quite a few people have been shocked, surprised, impressed that this was a DIY project, mm. which really, I, I think this is one of the easier projects that I've done compared to some of the things that we did renovating the old house. Some of them look like external cladding and, you know, up on scaffold towers. Whatever. I'm like, it's well within your remit. I told you this is why I married you. <laughs> well, yeah, maybe to I me... I knew you could do it. Yeah, maybe to me it's not that complicated. And 
maybe to other people it will be more complicated, but I'm not a professional and I don't have a huge amount of experience. I mean, as a DIYer, I'm a pretty competent DIYer and I have pretty much had a go at almost anything. And I know that I'm a terrible plasterer and I should never touch that ever again. Which is another but, good reason to not put in plasterboard because then we would have had to have gotten a plaster in. Yeah. So that's why but I don't I, regret that. Yeah, I probably would have got away with just taping and jointing it. But anyway, yeah, it, it's, it's definitely been uh, interesting and eye-opening that a lot of the people we were speaking with originally were making out that it was really expensive, really complicated, and you know a real mission. And I do wonder if the neighbours over the road, maybe they had the vans there for three weeks in a row, is are these contractors trying to justify the price of how much they charge for this job? Because it seems really excessive. I know everyone's got to make a living, and there's got to be profit in there. You know, I run my own small business. I understand about having profit margins, but, but maybe it it's more really about the excessive. snagging, though. Yeah, well, I know, but that's, that's what takes up the most amount of time. Yeah, it's true, but that's why you. Because I still haven't had my snagging finished in here. <laughs> yeah, am I bringing it up again? Oh dear! <laughs> the customer's always right, dear. The customer's always right. I'm just saying. Oh. They might have been there for three weeks, but, you know, it's been a few months. Yeah. Well, mostly on this job, you didn't... You, apart from, you chose the colour of the external roof. Yes. Um, Which you weren't too, totally happy about. You're like, you sure? Yeah, I thought it was a bit bright and a bit in your face, but... Um, I don't know. I think it's fine. I, th- I think. It's I mean, fine. how often do we look at our roof? That's why when I say it looks yeah. cheap and nasty, I'm like, yes, I look at my roof all day. Yeah, and I think, actually, the roof, especially from the bedroom number two from our boys bedroom it looks okay yeah it looks reasonable it looks decent it looks um yeah it doesn't look bodged up from there does it oh no because you sorted yeah, it yeah you throw me under the bus here yeah. bodge Just this bodge that bodge it bodger and badger okay should we make some mashed potato <laughs> well we should wrap up this video okay you know we've been recording for 28 minutes <gasps> i yeah. did think it had been a long time that's a bit long i'm yes. gonna have to cut some of this out yeah um, but finally, two minutes that you were wandering around looking for the questions true yeah <laughs> thanks I'm leaving all this in by the way this is going to be the blooper highlight reel or whatever it is at the end so you don't regret it I don't regret it we're both happy we did it we've still got work to do there's a little bit of flashing to be done outside lights to do inside and then we've got two radiators going in here and we need to do a little bit of corking, a little bit of painting, mm-hmm. a little bit of decorating, tidy, tidy up. But on the whole, we are pretty content with the decision and we would do it all over again, wouldn't we? Yes, maybe, if we moved house next year and we had a conservatory in it again, wham, bam, getting this done again. Yeah, or would we just buy a house that doesn't have a conservatory? Mm. Ooh. Oh, you had to pause on this one now, don't you? Ooh. Well, I always said conservatories are a stupid idea. Yes, I still true. can't believe that... When when was this put uh, in? 2010? 2003. 2003. I still think people knew by two, 2003 that conservatories are freezing cold in the winter and boiling hot in the summer and therefore are a ridiculous idea. You should just do an extension. Especially with this one. They got planning permission on it. They did everything officially, and they knocked out the back wall to the house. It's like, it's completely open. That's what we haven't touched on, actually. The knock-on effect to the rest of the house. We should have mentioned that when we were talking about keeping the house warm. Because do you remember, we had some of those really cold days where we were struggling, we were blasting the central heating, and the Blasting according to Ricky's standards. It was running constantly, because it wasn't even... We had the... Um, thermostat set at 19 degrees but the thermostat was never turning the heating off because it would never would get never the get there. room up to 19 yeah. degrees and that was big because there's two doors to this room that lead to the main house yeah, exactly. and lead to the room that so, the thermostat is kept <clears throat> in and they're not external doors they're just normal internal doors that have the air gaps in them yeah. for the minimum air changes and so th- when it got really cold it wasn't just this room this dining area and that kitchen it was the whole of the downstairs and there were some some days where we were like well let's just go live in the upstairs of the house it was the only place under the duvet yeah 
It's the only place we could keep warm. And it was kind of miserable. And I, I honestly, I question how the previous owners even coped with it at all. I know they were running the, the underfloor heating, the electric underfloor heating in here, 24 Well, their electricity bill was... Th- four, four times as much as what we paid. Yeah. Which is just madness. But even that, the, the underfloor heating is not enough to warm no. the sun. It just takes the chill no. off just a little bit. So. Barely even took the chill off. Yeah. Yeah, well, that's that's something yeah. else. As soon as we insulated, the rest of the house had a knock-on effect because the ha- the heat wasn't being you know leached into this room. All the other rooms could stay warm because this was much warmer in here, and because it was insulated, the heat is going to always find the path of least resistance to the cold, isn't it? That's how the energy works with yeah. science and physics and that's convection. That. Yeah, yeah, exactly. That's what it's called. Anyway, good to chat. Thanks for being on my YouTube channel. Thanks. You're not going to be famous and you're not going to get paid for this. Okay. Should I have made those terms and conditions clear to you? I think it's been clear from the start. Okay. (laughs) You know how poor I am and how not famous I am. I am your wife. Yeah, okay. (laughs) You know the truth. All right, thanks. Bye. 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 Bye.